Praise the name of the Lord. It's another day where we are bringing to you the gorgeous show. It's all about women, gorgeous ladies, empowering them and talking about our lives, the story of our lives. Not because we just want to brag or to look like we've gone through so much, but because we know there's another gorgeous lady out there, a girl, a young mother, an old mother, divorced, separated, single that is going through issues. And probably through gorgeous show, the Lord can lift the burden off your shoulder and you can be able to live another day. I'm Reverend Ruth Wamu and I'm joined by very gorgeous ladies. On my right, I have a beautiful, gorgeous lady called Pauline. And on my left, I have Reverend Mary Gidenji. I will give them an opportunity to introduce themselves to us uh, briefly, and then we can take over from there. Pauline, karibu sana for gorgeous. Santi. Yeah. My name is Pauline. Yes. Waithirawa Venerable Hillary. Yes. I'm born again. Mm -hmm. A mother of six children. Amen. And a grandmother of three. A grandmother of three. Yes. Wow. I'm married to an Anglican clergy. Amen. Uh, Chudikon Hillary. Wow. Yeah. We celebrate you at Gorgeous mm -hmm. Women. We love women with your story like yours. Mm -hmm. And uh, Reverend Mary Gedenji on my left, uh, kindly of introduce yourself to us. We know you, but uh, officially let us know you. Thank you. Uh, to all my viewers, praise the name of the Lord. Yes, my name is Reverend Mary Gedenji. Mary Gedenji. I love the Lord Jesus Christ. He's my personal savior. I'm a pastor's wife, Maiko Gedenji. We minister with Anchor Christian Church in Juja, Kiambu County. Thank Whoa. you. Amen. Uh, wait, don't even touch that dial. These ladies... I have a lot of stuff that they can share with us. Both of them, I know they are grandmothers. And um, I am one in the waiting. Hallelujah. Uh, they'll be sharing <laughs> their story with us. And uh, don't touch that dial. Let every gorgeous lady al around you know that we are here. And I'll just see you after this break. Yes, each one of us has a story in life. And uh, every girl, when you are born, you are born with dreams. You talk to a five-year-old right now, and they will tell you, when I grow up, I want to be this. When I grow up, I want to be that. Uh, it keeps changing, though. But even at the age of 20, at the age of 30, we keep dreaming. And sometimes those dreams never uh, come to actualization. And that leads to our topic today, which is about unmet expectations. When I've been dreaming, I've been having this idea of of my life. There is an ideal life I'd envisioned for myself and suddenly I find that probably what I'd expected is not what is happening. And especially in the area of relationships and in the area of ministry, in the area of career. But I believe because I'm joined by two beautiful, gorgeous pastor's wives, they can tell us probably when they, when they came into ministry, what were their expectations? Were they met? And when they've not been met, what have they done about them? And I'll begin with Reverend Mary. Uh, we celebrate you because you're not only a pastor's wife, mm -hmm. you are also a pastor mm -hmm. by your own right. And you've been a recording artist for the last almost plus 20 years. Sure. We celebrate you for that. You. And we are talking about unmet expectations. Mm -hmm. Let's begin from your, uh, your, your, your position as a pastor's wife. What were your expectations when you got married to Pastor Mike? Or maybe you got married to him when he was just a brother and became a pastor? Pastor. Can you share the story with us? <laughs> okay. Of course, like any other lady, any other woman, you have those dreams that uh, Reverend Ruth is talking about. Yes. And indeed, I had my own dreams. Yes. And uh, when I slept, I would dream being <laughs> married by that, you know, the man. Hallelujah. And uh, when it came to pass that I got married, by the time I was getting married, I was getting married to an evangelist. An evangelist. And he would go preach and uh, fire and brimstone. Hallelujah. And I was like, oh my God, this is the kind of man that I would want who goes preach and people come in masses and things happen. Let me just stop you a bit. So, is it that the fire in him is what attracted you to him? Or is it that you had a desire that you want a man that will serve God with you? Of course, first and foremost, I wanted a man who fears God. Yes. And a man who, who is not just a church goer, yes. but a person who has some ministry in him. Amen. And so when, when he came, mm -hmm. and of course, what I saw, yes. how God would use him. Hallelujah. Of course, I would have desired to be that kind of a woman behind yeah. that, that man. That greatness. Amen. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, so we, we got married by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. We got to children, to beautiful daughters. Yes. And uh, as time went by, 
he changed the course. Oh, Jesus. And he decided to go to Bible school. Yes. And the challenges began there. Hallelujah. So we put a stop to there and Thank then you. come to this gorgeous lady, Pauline, on my right. Mm -hmm. You're married to a reverend, oh, an, yeah. an Anglican reverend. Oh, yes. And um, I believe as a pastor's wife, mm -hmm. you have a role. Oh, yeah. And every member has an expectation of their ideal pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. And of course, you as a pastor's wife, you also have expectations from members. Oh, yeah. Have you struggled with unmet expectations from people and as a pastor's wife? Oh, oh yes. Yes. Because mine is a long story. Yes. Because it does not just start from being a pastor's wife. Yes. It starts from somewhere else. Yes. So I got married a very young girl at yes. the age of 22. 22, yeah. And uh, I married, this is my second marriage. It's your second marriage. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I married someone else. Yes. And as a little girl, or a little youth, yes. I did not know what to look in a man. Yes. I just wanted a handsome man. Yes. Someone who's been oh. in university, yes. American height. Yes. And I was not, I really didn't know yes. what I really wanted in a man. Yes. Because I was brought up in a home mm -hmm. where my mother and my father lived good life. So mm -hmm. I thought, ukitoka hapa ni kuolewa. It's true. So I just got married. Mm -hmm. Then uh, was it a church wedding? Yeah, or? it was a church wedding. So you were born again. Yeah. Oh, great! I was born again, mm -hmm. and having br been brought up in a family setting where everyone is just born again. Yes. So I was born again. I got married. Mm -hmm. I got three babies mm -hmm. with that man. Yes. Then he left and went for greener pastures. Yes. And then now my story about the the reverend again starts. Yes. Ten years from there. Ten years from yeah. there. Wow. Mm. This is quite a gorgeous woman. Don't mm. even touch that dial. <laughs> yeah. We need to walk with this story and these great women of God as we hear what they have for us. And now we, uh, we are there now. Uh, he went for Bible school. Reverend Michael, when Mike went for Bible school. Mm -hmm. And now you had not even signed in to be a pastor's wife. No. And now here you are. No. Can you share with us the journey? <laughs> Okay, now, when he went to Bible school, of course, the minimal time for Bible school is three years. Three years, yes. And now he leaves me with two kids. Yes. And uh, actually, the last one was about four months when he went. Wow. And there I was, the, the, the breadwinner. Yes. Of course, in Bible school, it was not a day's calling, it was a boarding. Oh, my goodness. And so I was there. I was to do shopping for him, mm -hmm. to venture for the kids, yes. and every other thing, mm -hmm. and... Uh, uh, it wasn't easy. Yes. For the three years, yes. it was not easy. And you're a young bride. You a have young also bride. needs. Yes. Yes, to be of somebody who is going to give you company. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And there he is. You boarding don't come. somewhere. Boarding somewhere. Yes. Of course. Thank God it was in Nairobi, so yes. he was coming on Saturday. Yes. But coming on Saturday evening, go to church. Yes. On Sunday, Sunday evening, he has to leave. Wow. So you don't even know what to tell him or what not to tell him. I know. Wow. At some point, it would happen that we don't even have anything to eat. Yes. And when he comes home, when I tell him what we've been going through, yeah. and then the other time he would come and tell me, I feel like I'm, I'm not going to continue with this. Because yes. when I think that you people, you are there, yeah. you don't have food, yes. then I, I, I feel like I cannot even eat the food that I'm being given in school. Yes. Yes. So I told, and I told him now, because there's nothing we can do. Yes. You have to go through these three years. Yes. So you, when you are given sausages and whatever else, you eat <laughs> and leave us alone. The Lord will take care of us until Amen. your time is finished. What a gorgeous lady you are. Amen. So what kept you going? Faith in God. Amen. Trusting in God. Mm -hmm. And one thing that also kept me going is to know that uh, whatever the challenges are, mm -hmm. this man has gone to pursue yes. knowledge mm -hmm. to be a better minister. Mm -hmm. So it has everything to do with God. Yes. And I don't want to be blamed mm -hmm. later that mm -hmm. I stressed him such that he could not be able to finish his, his education yeah. in theology yeah. and so being a barrier yeah. as to his ministry. So I told God, because of you, mm -hmm. I'll keep going Amen. until he finishes school. Amen. And also to know that, uh, you know, there's this scripture, Psalms 23, mm -hmm. kept me going. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall, shall not, not want. want. Amen. In, and even though I go through the valley of the shadow, yes. his rod and his staff, they will comfort, they me. comfort me. And they indeed comforted me for the three years. Amen. Amen. Hey, Reverend Mike, hey, this is quite a gorgeous lady. 
I believe everybody who is looking for tips on how to be a good wife, Reverend Mary Gidenji is one of those people that have walked through the talk. And she's a grandmother, by the way. Yes. And uh, her beautiful daughters are just amazing. All now full grown. I was talking to them and I was like, wow, Jesus, this is what you can do. And now Pauline, yeah. uh, here you are now, mm -hmm. three children mm -hmm. and uh, divorced. Yeah. What was the journey like? Because society has expectations mm -hmm. that when as a woman, especially in an African setting, mm -hmm. when you get married, that mm -hmm. women never, are never supposed to be divorced, mm -hmm. that you're supposed to stick with the father of your children. Mm -hmm. What are the kind of battles you face for the 10 years? It's not easy. Yes. It's not easy having been married mm -hmm. from the church, yes. being a firstborn in the family. Yes. Now you're here, you have three children. Mm -hmm. Who do not have a father I tell you. and uh, the expectation from your family mm -hmm. is also too much yes the community mm -hmm. does not look at you like a woman mm -hmm. you're like a husband snatcher oh my so goodness. even when you're in church and trying to tell them praise the lord yes. it does not come out <laughs> nicely they won't tell you, you know, amen because the opportunity uh, for that is yeah. marketing oh yeah yeah and even for your friends who are married, yes. you're still questionable. Is, that, is it that bad? Yeah. Wow. So you can imagine this young girl mm -hmm. who's been left with children, divorced, no job, mm -hmm. no money. You don't want to go to an extra mile of telling your friends, you know, mm -hmm. yes. you're still hiding it. I get you. So you get into depression. Mm -hmm. You try hiding yourself. Mm -hmm. Uh, when it's time for, we have a couple seminar, you even don't know where you belong. Wow. You don't even understand whether you're single, whether you're separated. Whether you're you do not even know. Yes. One, you've not seen this happen in your family. Yes. For one, you're also starting to preach and telling people, fear this God. Yes. You're hiding yourself in church. Mm -hmm. Every time there's uh, anyone who has a prayer request, you're like, I'm here. Uh -huh. Because definitely you have enough. Every preacher who comes, yes. you have a prayer request. Yes. Oh God, just bring my husband back. Amen. Wow. So it was not an easy journey. Mm -hmm. No one understands you. Yes. No one wants to work with you. Yes. Because your life is so questionable. What was the most hurting thing that you ever endured at that time? Uh, uh, like accepting yes. that I am divorced. Wow. And uh, from, from the background I'm coming from, mm -hmm. yes. a member of the Mother's Union, I was enrolled yes. in the Mother's Union when I was only 24 years. 24 years. So I don't know whether to tell the chair lady yes. to me atana nabwana because I know the rules and the regulations of the Mother's Union. Yes, you have to be. So in I'm in just there, I'm confused. Yes. I completely did not understand where I was coming from. Sure. And I did not know what to expect. Yes. Because all my expectations mm -hmm. are doomed now. I know that. You know, I wanted to be a family woman. Yes. I wanted to bring up my kids with a father. Yes. I wanted to have a good relationship with him even when he's outside the country. Yes. But it was not working. It was not working. So it was not even easy to mm -hmm. tell my friends it's not working. I tell you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Th these kind of stories, you only get mm -hmm. on gorgeous. Because we keep it real. Because there is a woman there, you may be watching us and you feel like you're all, all alone. I want you to know that we are here there for you. And just Jesus is on your side. No matter who has left, God will never leave. Um, there is this scripture that says that God will fulfill all the desires of our hearts. Mm -hmm. In your work with God, are there desires that God fulfills and others he does not? And according to your understanding as a woman of God, why does God not fulfill some desires even though they are good? Well, I would say that um, in my work with Christ, mm -hmm. of course, there are desires that God has fulfilled. Eh? Mm -hmm. And there are some that he has not fulfilled. Yes. But I count him faithful. Amen. Because uh, if he has not filled them mm -hmm. now, yes. it's because they are, not f they are not good enough for me now. Yes. But it doesn't mean that he'll never fulfill them. Mm -hmm. And if at some point in life mm -hmm. he doesn't fulfill them, yes. he'll still be faithful because he knows what is best for me. That's it true. could be my desire mm -hmm. that 
to me it might look good yes but to him it might not be good yes. and so i'll choose to still uh call him faithful amen knowing that that which he has not fulfilled yet mm -hmm. he will fulfill and he will in case he doesn't fulfill, mm -hmm. then it was not meant for me. Amen. Amen. Um, according to Pauline's story, do you feel like the church is doing enough concerning the divorced and the single women? As she has said, she struggled with wondering, where do I fit in? Am I a single mother? Am I, am I, am I a married? Mm -hmm. You know, that in between. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like the church is addressing... Uh, the issue of, of divorce, divo divorces and people that are going through relationships that are not working? Well, to, to some extent, because mm -hmm. I think it all depends on, um, on uh, the setups, yes. the, the, the ministry church setups, yes. how they, they, they view the yes. whole thing. Mm -hmm. But if I were to say, okay, the church is... Uh, kind of doing we can't say they're not doing yeah. something yeah but i believe we can do better it's true we can do better because if we if if we don't if we don't up the game as in um taking somebody i mean you know some most of the times we we just judge the mm -hmm. whole thing yeah you know wholesomely mm -hmm. but i i think it is important for us as the men and the women of god instead mm. of judging mm -hmm. from the face value yeah. we deal with issues as they come as they come mm -hmm. and from a specific point of view mm -hmm. depending on what has happened because i i believe most of the times what we do mm -hmm. some sometimes we don't even want to know yes what is happening what is happening yes what is the root cause mm -hmm. why did it have to be like this yes but most of the times we just slap them on the face mm -hmm. you're divorced you're divorced yes but i think sometimes it is important to narrow down yes come and understand mm -hmm. how did it come to be yes what were the circumstances surrounding it yes and above all mm -hmm. uh the soul yes of that person is more important is more important it's true because okay we can deal with the law mm -hmm. but then if we lose the soul mm -hmm. i mean it's true, losing it's true. the soul um, or dealing with the, the law. law we better deal with the soul yeah hey i'm talking on soul matters mm. pauline yeah. um you said you were in the mother's union mm -hmm. and there is this expectation mm -hmm. of a pastor's wife yeah now the Lord has healed you, probably you've been mm. able to overcome. Mm. How did the vicar now locate this divorced girl? And what was the theology about a divorced person? Because as a reverend, mm. I believe you already know that by the time you get married to somebody who is divorced, mm -hmm. you are in for a scandal. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. It takes a man yes. to go in for that kind of a drama. Yes. One thing that I You believe, call it good. Yeah. Drama. Drama. <laughs> mm -hmm. One thing that I know is that Yes, God hates divorce. Yes, He does. I would never want any of my friends to go through divorce. Yes, it's 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 a sad affair. Yes, but one thing I know is that God hates divorce. Yes, He but does. But He does not hate the divorces. It's true. He loves them. Yes, He does. And one time, I I, I really went into prayer and I was seeking God. Mm. Why did it have to happen? Yes. And God spoke to me. Yes. I, I fasted for seven days. Wow. God spoke to me on the seventh day, mm -hmm. on Deuteronomy 9, from yes. verses 1. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a word there that says, know this from today. Yes. I will hold your hand and I will walk with oh, you. Oh, amen. And I thank God because the Lord really hold, held my, my hand, hand yeah. and walked with me. Amen. So I'm there, I'm divorced, mm -hmm. I have my kids, yes. I'm, trying, I'm trying to run away from everything. Yes, and of Stuck course trying to run away from people. From people. Yeah. I don't want anyone to ask me about Your husband. Uh, my husband. Yeah. My kids are also going through that yes. tough moment yes. of other kids talking about their daddies. Yes. Then they do not have mm. a, yeah. a daddy mm -hmm. because my ex-husband left when the small baby who is now in form four, mm -hmm. he was only two weeks. Wow. So he doesn't even know. Mm -hmm. So I'm just there and after several years, 
a man knocks my door and tells me, hi, Pauline, and I thought he was coming to, to invite me. Yes to go speak to women because initially I was a preacher. Yes. I remember one time we invited you, Mary, oh, to come great. to our, yeah. uh, some ministry in Thika. We were really yeah. trying to become good women. Yes, I tell you. We did everything for those <laughs> marriages. Amen. And uh, at that particular time when he comes in, he tells me, I want to marry you. Mm -hmm. And I asked oh, him, just you? like that? Yeah. <laughs> in fact, he didn't have any proper arrangement of the yeah. words he's going to say. Yeah. It's like, Pauline, uh, I want to marry you. Oh, and then I'm like, I thought you were inviting me to come and speak to women oh, or preach in your church. Mm, mm. He told me, no, I'm coming to ask you. He had not even dated you? No, no nothing. he just comes to my house, calls me, comes, tells yeah. me, I want to marry you. Oh, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm what crazy. a man. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I know you, Mutugateri, you know? Uh, I'm like, what is <laughs> your problem? You. <laughs> and you know my story. <laughs> And you can imagine now, Mutugateri, yeah, yeah. and here you are, a divorcee. A divorcee. You're already like... With kids. With kids. And let me tell you something. Yeah. By the time he's coming to ask me, mm -hmm. my daughter is in high school in Form 4, wow. already pregnant. Oh, Jesus. Wow. So I'm handling... One, I've been handling a divorce. Mm -hmm. Then the teenage... Yes. Then my daughter is here already three mm -hmm. months pregnant. Mm -hmm. Then another man here who happens to be a clergy is coming to tell me I want to marry you. Wow. On that high note, yeah. before you touch that dial, <laughs> we mm -hmm. are going to take a break and then we are going to hear what happens next. Wow. I'm also eagerly waiting to hear now that all this drama is happening. What will the Lord do for Pauline and for Reverend Mary? Mm -hmm. See you after the break. Welcome back, our viewer. It's gorgeous, and we, we, we end, went to the break on a very high note where Paul, uh, Pauline was telling us that now this clergy comes, and you can imagine as a divorcee now, you, your pastor now comes yeah. and knocks your door and says, I want to marry you, just yeah, like that. Just like that. Can you tell us more? I went into a shock. Yes. And then I looked at him, and I was like, At your age? Yes. My age? Yes. No. Mm -hmm. No way. Yes. So I told him, no, mm -hmm. I'm not ready for scandals. When you talk about age, is he younger? Is he no, older? he's older than me. Yes. Yeah, because this year he'll be turning 55. Yes. And I'll be turning 45. Yes. So I'm looking at him and I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. Wow. After all, church manenos, yes. no way. You don't want. I don't want. Yes. I know the way it'll be. Mm -hmm. So he talks to me, he talks to me. I tell him, okay, I'll think about it. Yes. So he just goes, and then after some few months, everyone is saying, Pauline is dating Reverend Hillary. <laughs> so the story Ooh, is the all over, you know. know. Who told them? I don't know, but at a particular point, we went to take tea together. Yes. And I think when a man has lost a wife, yes. he's vulnerable almost to, to so many people. Yeah, I know. So everyone wants to know. Mm. Okay, so yeah. after some few months, everyone is like, Pauline is dating? Reverend Hillary. So yes. when I go to church, I, uh, people start looking at me like those ones of, eh. yeah. And then he was serving the same parish that I was also yeah. attending church. Mm -hmm. So one time he says, uh, I have friends here and then everyone is looking at me. <laughs> so it, is, it was oh, not easy. Jesus. But by and by, mm. I, I started telling myself, would it be an opportunity to maybe get married again? Yes. I started falling in love. Wow. And wow. I fell in love. Had you considered it before or you had No, that I had chapter? never thought yes. I would ever get married again. Wow. I'd never thought a divorced woman yes. can get a man, a man to marry her mm. with, three children, with three children and a pregnant daughter. Yes. No way. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know God can do it. Amen. And I would encourage the viewer today. Mm -hmm. It can happen. Amen. Yeah. I'm wow. not encouraging people to divorce. Yes. But I know God can do it. Amen. God can restore you. Amen. And God can bless you. Amen. If your desire is to have a family, yes. God will surely give you. Amen. Yeah. Wow. What yeah. a testimony. Mm -hmm. uh, Reverend Mary, I believe you, you, you brought up children and you have grandchildren. Mm -hmm. what, are the, uh, what, are the, uh, what is your advice to a young girl, probably the age of 22, the age of 23, up to 20, probably 30? and they want to get married, what are the expectations they should have of a man when they're getting married, especially if they're born again? Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, first and foremost, I would say, um, as a girl and as a born again Christian, um, of course, the Bible says that we should not be yoked yes. 
together with unbelievers. unbelievers. Yes. So uh, the guy that you should be expecting to come knocking as yes. the clergy knocked on the Pauline's door. I get you. <laughs> should be uh, a God-fearing person, a born-again yes. Christian, of course. Yes. Um, all the same, I would say, your expectations mm -hmm. should one be, okay, that person is born again, mm -hmm. maybe spirit-filled, mm -hmm. or pursuing to be filled with the Spirit of God, yes. God-fearing, mm -hmm. and active in, the, in, in his Christian life. Yeah. But also, you should also expect that person to be 100% yes. physical. You physical. Know, I mean... Manadamu. Uh, Manadamu. Eh, not, yeah. not, 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 uh, not, not like seventy-five percent human, uh, spiritual, and twenty-five percent human. Yeah. He's he's both spiritual and, and human. human. Yeah. And so, uh, don't, don't don't lean on one side. Yes. And leave the other side, because yeah. that is what most of us girls. Mm -hmm. Uh, get ourselves in trouble mm -hmm. when as born again mm -hmm. we expect you know that angel mm -hmm. I mean like 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 in my case yes. as I had Tell said eh? more, yeah. <laughs> I had married an evangelist yes. eh? fire brimstone yeah but I never realized that when we go home <laughs> the, the <laughs> He's a human being, yes. a man. Yes, he's who, not in the, or in, under the power of the Holy Ghost. No, 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 all no. the time. No, not under the Holy Ghost all the time. Yeah. Actually, Akitoka Pale, yeah, Bahu, he becomes human. a total man, yeah, a total human, yeah, human being, yeah, who has expectations, mm -hmm. who has, um, who has that eye and that, that hand. I mean, and 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 he he has expectations. He, he there are those things that he. He desires that you do as a wife. Yes. You know? And uh, issues of... I mean, and I don't know what happens when they, go, when they, when they, when they marry. Yeah. They forget everything. Yes. As in, they forget that um, Kitoa socks. Yes. It, it should be kept somewhere. I tell you. So, you no. realize uh, Yeah, they enter a carefree zone. Yeah. Yes. If, if, the if, Lord if, settles their heart. It, it's hard. They settle and settle. <laughs> so, you should expect that settling, yes. my sister. Yes. So, whatever changes you find him yeah. with, mm -hmm. uh, you just realize it's just because you entered in as a helper. So, don't be disturbed. What mm -hmm. according, probably as we end this show, because I hear my director is telling me that we need to wind up. Um, what was one of the expectations that you had when you were getting married but was unrealistic and it could never be met? That's a hard one, but hey. just... I'm an imingi. No, out of the many, just give us one. Okay, of course, as I said, eh, when I got married, I expected uh, life would be so smooth. Yes. So smooth. Yes. You know, ile, ile, the fairy tale. Yes. Yeah? The, the the princess and whatever and they left yeah. they lived happily, happily ever, ever after <laughs> i didn't know that yes. i'd go through stuff yes go through issues yes i, I didn't know that a time would come when uh, even feeding myself would be a big problem wow. feeding my children would be a big problem mm -hmm. i didn't know that a time would come when uh, <laughs> Just, when we should just be, say it. when actually as a family, yeah. we are not able to pay rent. I tell you, and uh, the landlord would come yes. and start start counting. I'll take this. I'll take this and take this. Wow. To to pay off the debt. My 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 rent arrears. I had never seen that coming. Wow. But it came. But we thank God Amen. that it's no longer the same. Amen. So even if you, even if you are there yeah. as a lady and you're in that marriage yeah. and it's like, this is not what I expected. Yes. I'll just encourage you. Yes. Lean on. Press on. Amen. Things will change. Glory to God. Wow. Amen. What an encouragement from Reverend Mary. And uh, Pauline, as we wind up because of time, um, now that uh, you decided that you're going to turn this thing around, how did you turn it? To be accepted in the church, to get married, and here you are. It's a long story. Yes, it is. Because at a particular point, mm -hmm. uh, I, having arranged everything and set the date of the wedding, mm -hmm. someone appears from nowhere. Yes. 
and write a letter to the bishop, yes. to my husband, to the registrar of marriages, yes. that I'm, I'm his girlfriend oh, and the wedding should stop. Wow. So again, the wedding stops three days to the day. Again, now I'm left in another. It's a long story. What did, uh, what did Reverend Hillary say? What? No, he what told me, I still love you. Oh, Jesus. I still love you. I know this is the enemy. Amen. And I'm getting to you. Amen. And then we had to wait for another whole year again. And then we did the wedding. It was colorful. Amen. It was really nice. Amen. Then we, 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 Mchungaji came back to work in the yes. Diocese of Meru. Yes. He became an archdeacon. Yes. We've seen God do great things. Amen. My story is a story that is so sad, yes. but it ends up nicely. Hallelujah. Amen. So how did they deal with that stereotyping of, you know, you're a divorcee, and um, now you are here married to a reverend? Did they accept your ministry? They also didn't understand. They, yes. they didn't know how to deal with me. Yes. Because here now is a clergy who is in love yes. with a divorcee. They also yes. didn't know how to deal with it. I know. But of course, because we were in love, they had to deal with it. Yes. They had to accept that we are getting married and we are moving on. Amen. And uh, I can tell young girls, don't yes. come into marriage with an expectation. Yes. Just come knowing that it is you who is going to make the marriage yes. work. Yes. But don't come in thinking he will make it work. It's true. Just put your efforts there. Amen. And and just try your best yes. to do the best you can. Amen. Don't end up in a divorce. It's not a very nice story. Yes, it's not. It's not a very nice word, mm -hmm. but sometimes you go through it Amen. so that I can encourage you today Amen. and tell you it can work. Amen. Great has been his faithfulness. Amen. Amen. Wow, what an inspiring story. And what a, you know, I have two wonderful guests that have poured out their hearts and told us their hearts. And I want you to know that um, sometimes life will not give you what you desire. But I can tell you, God will never allow you to go through what you cannot handle. And uh, maybe uh, somebody is asking, uh, how, how come that you're saying she got remarried to a reverend and here she is? How come uh, that Reverend Mary is telling young girls, get married to somebody who is spirit-filled and all that? I tell you that every will of God concerning your life is written in his word. Mm -hmm. As long as it is in his word, you follow the word of God. I can assure you, nothing will ever go wrong. As, as she said, don't come into marriage with uh, expectations. When we talk about those expectations, it's a don't come with a mentality that somebody else owes you something. Get into that relationship knowing that I'll give my 100% and out of that, God will give you a wonderful marriage. We can talk and talk because this is gorgeous, but unfortunately, our time does not allow us to talk more. Uh, I, we want to take a break as we bring the testimony that is coming from another gorgeous lady who's been through an obstacle and overcome. See you later.